Hello, everyone, and welcome to Amy's Knit Lab. I am so, so excited to have my guests today, Brandy, Cheyenne Harper, and Anna Hoosman, who are here today. These are two authors that I had the chance to collaborate with in my new book, Neons and Neutrals. We're going to have a nice conversation with both of these designers. What's very interesting about both of them is that they both use the intarsia technique that's yeah. featured in Neons and Neutral. So I'm super excited to talk about this technique with both of these designers. Um, I just want to remind you that this is my YouTube channel where I talk about all things yarn related. And right now we're, we're working through a series about Neons and Neutrals, my new book. You probably remember previously that we hosted Knit Nights around um, Worsted, my first book. And I'm super excited to kind of revamp my YouTube channel and start adding some more content here. So stay tuned for that. I am joined here with my communications assistant, Julia Taylor. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'll let Julia introduce herself a little bit. Hi, everyone. I'm Julia. Um, I work at La Vianne Aimée with Amy. Um, I've been there for a few years and I've done a lot of different jobs here, <laughs> which has been uh, really fun. And, uh, you know, just uh, being knitting nerds all day, every day. <laughs> that's me <laughs> it is a pretty lucky job that I have that I get to work with so many knitters and we get to talk <laughs> about knitting every day Julia will you tell us what you have on your needles today so today I'm knitting and wearing le bandana because wow. we've been just um knitting and wearing bandanas for a few weeks now it's been a, a real bandana party and it's super fun so i'm knitting a new sample in la bien uh felix and in moondrake uh fuwa fuwa that's my favorite word. her new favorite word she walks around tries to use it as much fuwa, as she fuwa. can <laughs> I love it. So this is um, a two color version. I just started the second color, which is this neutral um, beige. It's um, Felix Avoine um, and Fuwa Fuwa in this beige. I, I forget. I think we'll, we'll desert the, or sand. Yeah, we'll put all the notes down below. Yeah. I'm knitting a bandana as well. So I'm doing some basic like intarsia shapes just kind of contained a little bit different than some of the other ones that I've done so this was another one that I'm going to be working on charting which is kind of like intarsia all over the place so I've been on an intarsia kick and so obviously when I started like curating these books I was looking for designers who use intarsia so that brings us to the two designers that we're going to talk with today. And I would like to bring forward Brandy Cheyenne Harper. We're going to have a quick conversation with her. Hi, Brandy. Hi, Amy. How are you, Amy? You know, I call you Ami. And <laughs> I love that you call me Ami because it's like a mix between Amy and Aime. And it's like you yes. mess them together. So just please keep calling me Ami. No, you, we talked about this when you were in Brooklyn. It was so fake. That was like... And, that, and I call you Ami. Like when I talk about you, I'm like, oh, my friend Ami. I'm designing for this book with my friend Ami. <laughs> but like, Ami means friend name. in French, which is just perfect. Yeah. But <laughs> yes, how are you? Good, good. I'm so happy to catch up with you. Um, can you tell us where you're based? Where are you right now? I'm in Brooklyn, New York. I planned on wearing a sweater and all these things, but it is New York City heat wave. And it's just very good. We haven't hooked up our air conditioning yet. So I'm in Brooklyn, New York, and I grew up here. Great. Uh, well, recently I saw in your stories that you were somewhere with like water and sun. <laughs> and where was that? I was in Costa Rica. I oh, was in Costa goodness. Rica. I was living on a farm with this really beautiful family and I pretty much just stayed there. It was honestly just a place to like just be. And um, I was recording a lot of video content. That's like another big shift that I'm taking with my work. And it's a lot more involved. <laughs> I have a newfound respect for like YouTubers and even like seeing what you've been able to do and bringing people together for me is like documenting my work in a visual way. And so I went there for a lot of different reasons, for vacation, for rest, for retreat, but also to like work and create like a story, visual storytelling story style 
um, in a really quiet place. And yeah, it was really, really beautiful, really beautiful. I love that. I love that. Well, before we get more into that kind of stuff, let's let's go back up and have you tell us your knitting origin story. Can you like introduce yourself to my to my YouTube channel and tell us about your background? Okay, so I am Brandy Cheyenne Harper. I am a multidisciplinary artist and a knitting teacher and a knitting, a knitting designer. And uh, I taught myself to crochet when I was four, 14 and how to knit when I was 15. My grandmother lived in Florida and I didn't, I've only met her once in my life before she passed, but she made these really beautiful crocheted afghans for me and my other like five siblings and every year she would send this, you know, a new afghan for one of us. And she asked us what our color, favorite colors were. And at the time mine was purple. And she said this really big, beautiful, like afghan square, purple variegated yarn. Probably, she probably used like, um, she probably used like big, big, big caron. You know that yarn caron? Yes. Like, yeah, my mom had probably... that in her stash too. I know that yarn so well. <laughs> she probably <laughs> used that or she probably used red heart. Yep. Variegated yarn. She yep, yep. One of those. And at the center of it was these really beautiful flowers. And I wanted to learn how to crochet the flowers. And I taught myself to crochet when I was 14. From like, I don't know, I don't know for people in the States might know like the scholastic news. Back in the day, yes. we used to get like those little and you could like order books for like it was $2. such a big deal when the scholastic news catalog would come. We'd all run home and be like, I want that one. I want that one. <laughs> it was like a thing. And yeah. I remember getting like a couple of books from Scholastic News, including knitting books. Vogue, big, big book of knitting, Vogue knitting. I got my first Vogue knitting from Scholastic News when I was in school. I was very young. Wow. And I taught myself to knit a year later. And then a year later, I started working at a yarn shop. I remember going to my mom and being like, mommy, I need some, I need some money for some yarn. And she said, how much is the yarn? And I said, I mean, you know, she, she, I was like, $10. She said, $10? For a ball of yarn, you said you need to get yourself a job. <laughs> and so I, was, so I was walking down the street one day in Brooklyn, and there was a yarn shop that was hiring. And I walked in and I got hired. And a year later, I started teaching knitting, and I was 17, making $25 an hour. And I felt quite accomplished and fancy. <laughs> and all I do is spend it all on yarn. Um, and yeah, that's my, that's my origin story. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. You know, I mean, we've known each other for a while, but I've actually never heard this story the way you just told it. And it's so incredible at such a young age to be able to go and get a job so that you can pay yes. for your hobby and your passion. Yeah. How incredible is that? You know, it was it was incredible. And I learned so much. I mean, I learned on the job, too. It was like I learned on the job. There was so much that I didn't know. And I was self-taught. And, you know, I met I actually met a woman there who was teaching at the time who opened up another yarn shop in Park Slope, Brooklyn, not too far from where you and I hung out when we were, we, you know, in Park Slope that day. Yeah. And um, she was like, I would love for you to come and like be a teacher and like help me manage this new shop I'm opening. And I ended up becoming like a store manager with her for many years through my first like years of college. And so it kind of like was like my first job, like my first kind of like start to my career pretty early on. That's incredible. My gosh. Yeah. yeah. So how long would you say you've been designing knitwear? Ooh, since I was since I was 14 as soon as I started learning how to knit and crochet I started designing my own clothes because I have like I'm really kind of busty I don't know if you could tell from this but I have like a, a large bust and like a small waist and like hips and I, I had a, a lot of difficulty finding clothes that could fit me well and I remember at the time I wanted like a backless halter top you know one of those cute you know like a, what a 14 year old girl want to wear you know and I wanted like the little like something that could actually fit my bus. I've been pretty much a double, like a triple D, double D um, since I was like 14 years old. And so yeah. I remember the first thing I designed when I was 15 was a backwards halter top inspired by a top that I wanted to make from a Rebecca magazine. Remember? They used to I do. Rebecca the Becca magazine. magazines. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Rebecca, Rebecca. You don't know what this is. This is a magazine that came in the 90s and you would just like, it's like mail order shopping, but like, yes. all the, yeah fashion and it was incredible oh my god we'll have to find a clip or a photo of it and put it up when we when we air this but yeah yeah so I ended up making like I wanted to make something like that but it just didn't give me enough support and so I ended up redesigning it to like rig it up so that it can like pull me up pull me in 
and like create a lot of support. So I've been designing now for over, as long as I've been a knitter, it's about 20 years now. So just seeing you talk about structurizing that halter top makes me think of your design work today because everything that I've seen you knit since I discovered you a couple of years ago is super structured. And let's, let's dig into Harmony. So Harmony is this jacket here that, that Brandy designed this gorgeous jacket here. I have it also behind me here and right here. And it is a piece of work because structurally like when you look at it people get so interested into it they talk about architecture they see all these things when they look at it tell me about this tell me about because this is a signature of your design yeah I had so much fun designing this piece for you I mean it was like your theme was like mixing bases at the time and yeah ah I can't wait to make another one (laughs) um (laughs) was mixing bases at the time and I remember thinking that I knew I wanted to design a cardigan. Cardigans, I like love them so much. And something that actually had buttons because you were like, I want you to bring in a lot of different yarns. And that for me was like so inspiring because I generally use like single ply yarns. I use, um, you know, pretty basic colors. Yeah, pretty basic colors. But for this piece, I wanted to have something that was really simple, but something that kind of incorporated some of that structural like work that I like to incorporate, which I, I kind of akin to like armor and like this kind of creating work that feels really protective and you kind of, you know, you wear it and you feel immediately like, you know, like elevated, you know, I kind of, I kind of like that. I think being the kind of, being the person who I am in this world of like creating work that this makes me feel more powerful, you know? Yes. And so it it was fun. Like I knew I started with those swatches that I sent you. And I love garter stitch because it's so simple. It kind of allows me to create really intricate work, but that feels wearable. Um, and I knew that I wanted to incorporate intarsia. And what's really fun about this sweater is that I use a technique I had never done before, which was intarsia in the round. Um, which was really interesting. Like you have to work in target in the round flat. And that was something that was really <laughs> cool kind of trying to figure out. And it was so much so that what came up in like the testing circle, like, I mean, in the testing phase was that like that needed a video because so many people like had never done something like that before, including me. And so I have a video that's linked in the book that shows how to do that in target technique of like creating a target in the round. So structurally as well, it's like something that it was really interesting for me because I had never done it before and I had to like figure it out and um, had to figure out how to teach it and show it in a way that people can really follow and do it themselves. And so, um, yeah, I'm really excited about the neck detail and so and, much. So much. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really cool. I wish I had the sample. It's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring this over so that we can see it really quick, but like this collar back here stands up. Yeah. that structure going on here here you can really see the difference in the weights of the yarn so we use yes. a super bulk here and a bulky here and what everyone hands down when they try this sample on on tour is they say this is a completely wearable sweater because you know how we knit these big bulky sweaters I've done it you know with super yes. bulky but then you knit the whole thing in bulky yarns but then when you put your arms down it's like you kind of yeah. feel like that kid from the Christmas story wearing his like <laughs> snowsuit walking around because you got all this like, you know, bulk underneath here. And because of the of the method that you used of using two different weights of yarn here, took away that bulk immediately yeah. and made the piece wearable, elevated, like you said. Like uh, the minute people put it on, they were like, oh my gosh, this feels so great. I love that you use the term armor because it does feel like armor. When I was in Minnesota, Brandy, I have to tell you, everyone wants to knit this because they were like, this is the kind of sweater we need for a Minnesota winter. You know? yes. I love that so much. Yeah, it was uh, really, really cool. And then the little the little plus on top of that is the is these buttons that you created oh, here. Oh, How did you come up with the idea for this? Oh, I be like, I love those buttons. I came, I was just on Instagram actually. And I was just, I was just scrolling and I saw someone like just using crochet to crochet buttons. 
And so I sat down and I said, okay, I'm going to try and design a button but that is based on magic loop. Um, not magic loop, um, magic circle, magic like, circle. Uh, you know, yeah, magic yeah. circle. Yeah. And so I kind of played around with that and I tried a couple of different things. A lot of things weren't really, it wasn't really hitting for me. And then I ended up using a smaller yarn. I was like, I can't use a chunky yarn for this. It's just not going to look great. No. And I tried a number of different like single crochets in the loop. Uh, to try and how, to see how I can get like a, a really beautifully designed button that that looked that didn't necessarily look handmade. I, I wanted a button that was handmade, but that looked like you could have purchased it from a store. And so it kind of took some fine tuning. But I, I remember just seeing something on Instagram, um, just someone using crochet to make a button. I've seen this before. Most handmade buttons are crochet. Like I've seen a lot of a lot of buttons that use crochet as a base. And so I kind of just played around with my own way of doing it to create something that looked really nice that could complement the sweater. And so I remember, I think we sent, I knew I knew I wanted to use a couple of different yarns yes. and because to kind of stick with the theme. And so I ended up using two of yours, one like your mohair, which is just so beautiful. Actually, no, I use, what did I use? It's so funny now. <laughs> I used two of, I used one, of, I used your mohair Yes, and merino also, singles. I use your yeah, your singles and your mohair, and yeah. I use like a cotton, like a, a cotton silk yarn that I have some scrap to bring the buttons together because you needed yep. something that was stronger to tie the buttons to the sweater. And so those buttons, I am so proud of those buttons because I'm really picky about buttons, and it's the reason why I don't really add a lot of buttons to my sweaters because I don't know something about chunky yarn and buttons that do not always work. Um, it, it doesn't always look well. And also as a bust, someone who's like really busty, I find that when I button things, sometimes it, it kind of pops open here. I don't know for those who have bigger chest gap. Yeah, I have that same problem too. You know, that little gap. And I've always had that problem with things, like buying things that were that could fit my waist and my shoulders, but they never fit my bust. And so I always did like open front things. But as I designed work, one of the common things that I got from knitters was like, how do I button this? How do I close this? And so I knew I needed to find like a way to create a button that could complement any kind of design, um, as, including harmony, but that was like, you can make your own, you know, you can make it as big or as small as you want it. Yes, yes. Different yarns, you know, you could customize it. And that's what I so, love so much about the button. So there is also a video on like how I created that button that's linked in the video, that's linked in the book that I hope like helps people to make these and like customize them and maybe apply them to their own work in other ways. But I love those buttons. I'm really, really proud about how they came out. Yeah. I'm excited about homemade buttons because I'm more excited about wearing cardigans. I've actually recently just kind of decided that I want to wear more cardigans too and harmony is such a great jacket because yes you can wear it buttoned up but I would just wear it open you know and have yeah. those beautiful buttons as like a statement piece on the front yeah. of the sweater so I'm always like looking for special buttons and things like this and the, and when you told me about your homemade buttons I was just like oh my god this piece so let's talk about the name harmony how yeah. did you come to this name for this pattern oh man so I was thinking about the fact that we were kind of working with the theme mixing bases. And I really, for me, like I do a lot of different things. And when I say like I'm a multidisciplinary, like interdisciplinary artist, like I do a lot of different things. And I think I have always kind of like um, struggled with that concept of like mass, like jack of all trade, you know, master of none, right? And like I jumped from like clay to wood, to yarn, to designing, to editing, you know, and I, I kind of do a lot of different things. One of the things I started doing in my life was I started simplifying. I started like starting to, I started to like think about where the intersections were. Like, why do I do what I do? And how does, how is it represented visually? And so color is one of the things that I've done to like really bring my life together. Like if you even look around my apartment, like everything, my yarn, my, my clothing, the kind of spices I like, the kind of furniture I buy. I mean, everything is pretty much linked by color. And it's been a really easy way for me to bring, to make my life feel cohesive and to feel mm -hmm. really comforted and, and at ease and everything that I do because it's really filtered through this idea that I, I really just want to live a really peaceful, easeful life, you know? Mm -hmm. And color is a way that supports that. So I started doing research about color theory 
Um, and I, I came and through that, through that, because I was like combining different yarns with different colors and they were coming together. And I was like, thank God it's coming together. <laughs> like it's like looking like something, you know? And it's not looking like patchwork, which is nothing wrong with patchwork, but it's something really beautiful that when you do in Target or any kind of color work, when you bring those things together and it's like, wow, like match made in heaven. Like, why does that happen? And so I started looking into color theory as like an idea in design. And, you know, when you put certain colors on a color wheel together, they complement each other. They, they either invoke a feeling, they evoke emotion, they evoke a feeling of whatever you want to feel, hunger, relaxation, peace, ease, you know, anger sometimes, you know, if you put certain colors together. And so the word harmony came up during my research. And I was like, yeah, this, this is the word. And I think just everything going on in the world, just in general, I think when we think about color, like you know, we think about literally color of a person and ethnicity. Um, I think you know how do we how do we bridge these gaps that have been created in our world through you know these systems, and how do we create harmony in the lives that we live with each other through continents, through through cultural lines, you know. So I kind of I also like to kind of weave in. Um, like some kind of like it's some kind of social political message in all you know, of my work. <laughs> and that is something that I really admire about your work because I um if you don't know this, Brandy is a published author. She oh, published a book yeah. called Knitting for Radical Self in January 2022. Is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Can you tell us about your book and what it what it feels like to be a published author and what is the message you're trying to put out through your books? Knitting for radical self-care. In that book, I lay out eight principles about how knitting intersects our lives and how it informs the way we live and how it makes us really more capable and more powerful to create the life we want to live. And I think some of us, like, you know, we knit because it makes us happy. But there's something that for me, knitting really, um, really taught me at a very young age that anything that I want is possible as long as like, I really want it, you know? <laughs> like sometimes we, we really want things, we don't get it. But I often find that when I want something, knitting is also, is often proof that I can, I can start something, I can go through the process. And sometimes it can be really difficult. You know, any knitter just like had difficulty with a pattern or had to rip something out or had to like, be like, damn, I should have checked my gauge, you know, like have to begin again, you know? like. It is like we learn so much about ourselves through our knitting practice. And it's, for me, always proof of my capacity to create the life I want to live. And so knitting, I, you know, the first word is like intersection. The first principle in my book is intersectionality. It's about how knitting is affected by our income, our skin color, our, our physical ability, you know, our access to space, you know, our belief in ourself, our self-esteem. I mean, all of it can really affect how we approach knitting. And so I admit in my, in my book, I really wanted to kind of bring those ideas to the forefront that, you know, once we get, once we, our relationship with knitting actually builds a, a more intimate relationship with ourselves and the creating the world we want to see, building the community we want to have. And um, I try and do that <laughs> in this book. And um, I get emotional because I, how does, how does it feel to be a published author? It's overwhelming. I'm not going to lie. It's overwhelming. You know what I mean. Like, agree. I can agree. Yeah. It's overwhelming, you know, because, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's something that I really wanted. And it took many years of like this kind of consistently putting my work out there and like having this learning curve as a designer, going from someone who created, sold finished products. That was like really what I did. I sold finished products, you know, and I taught entrepreneurship classes for like the city and museums and things like that. And I transitioned into writing knitting patterns. So it was something that was like a learning curve for me to learn how to write knitting patterns in a way and create my own style. And um, so it was like huge, you know, transition for me and for it to be as well received as it has been. And I feel really honored, you know? And so I feel like I have a responsibility to, um, to continue going and yeah. to put my work out in the world. And, you know, even as like a black queer designer and knitter in the world, I get messages on Instagram and in the world being like, wow, it's so amazing to see you doing what you're doing. And like, it showed me that I can do it. So it's overwhelming. It also feels like really exciting. Yeah. Um, I feel like I have a great responsibility, not only to myself, but to my community to, 
keep doing what I'm doing, keep putting work out into the world and um, and to try and, you know, bring knitting to the people as, as much as I can as like a real tool of like healing and liberation in the, mm. in the way that we live our lives and the way that we, you know, we create the world we want to see. So I think that answers your question. I'm so sorry. That answers my question <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> just want to say everyone should run out and grab brandy's book it's a beautiful book to look through and read the words are extremely calming and the patterns are exciting in there and they're very very much her style um <laughs> let me ask you a question about neons and neutrals if you were to knit something for yourself from neons and neutrals what would you knit oh my god so uh, uh, anna anna's hat, yeah, anna? hat that is already done i'm, I'm so excited <laughs> I'm going to use my stash. So, and I cannot wait to make your hat. Not only that, like you and I have, I'm, Anna's not on the screen right now, but she's coming up next. We have like a similar color scheme. Like I love Anna's colors. They're gorgeous. Yeah. And so I was deeply inspired by the colors that she used. Um, I definitely want to make that. And I definitely want to make Zhao. Is that how you pronounce it? Oh, Zhao the Mai. The, the Best by Layla Chang. Layla Yang. Yes. No, is it is it that with the cable with the the beautiful cabled? Um, is that it? Hold on, I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly. It's how my yes, how my with, with the beautiful um, is it braids? This one? With the beautiful braids? Yes. 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 yes, yes. Oh my god, yes. that one. That yes. one. I mean, I mean, I look at the pattern. It's the it's the it's the technique that beautiful yes. stitch. I love, especially as someone who's like. I'm always going to be an apprentice to my work. I'm always like a teacher. Like people are like, I, I just, I, I stop kind of even kind of shying away from the word teacher. I kind of like the word guide because I feel like I'm like constantly learning and I'm kind of on this path. I'm always going to be on it. And I feel like in a lot of ways, I, I, I lead, right? Because I have a design a second. I design, and I create instructions, but I feel like I love following people like work of other designers that teach me new things and I've never seen before. And that braid, like I've never done anything like that before. So I'm really, really well, excited. It's super I'm fun to knit. Watch. We like swatched a whole Is bunch it? of them. <laughs> so you'll I see. love it. <laughs> so I would definitely knit those two. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> we want to get back on topic here because I want to ask you like, what kind of projects are you working on right now? Is there anything you can share with us or sneak peek? Yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so if you're following, if you're following Harmony, if you're working on Harmony, I highly recommend checking out my Skillshare classes that just came out. It's really such a huge <laughs> huge project that I'm really proud of. Skillshare is like an online teaching platform and they reached out to me to create a series of knitting classes for their in-house production, Skill Skillshare Originals, which was so, such an honor. And I basically have three classes with them, how to make a sweater, how to modify sweaters, like be, be, in a very basic rudimentary way, you know, knitting is very mathematical. So I try and make people really simple. And then in the third class, I go over specific techniques all of most of which I use um, in harmony. So I go over in detail how to do tubular cast on. I go over how to do the I core cast on, and so and I core um sal the I core salvage, which I use in harmony. So if you need like any specific like tech like help with those kinds of techniques, you can use my link um it's in my bio um, in my website. And you can get like a free month to go share to like take the class and like try we'll it out. We'll include that link in our notes too. So people yes. can get access. <laughs> so that's to like, that. yeah, that's huge. That's big. And it's, I, it's, it's something that I really wanted to give, like offer my community as a way of like supporting their, their work and also supporting my patterns. Those who pe those people who like follow my patterns, like now hopefully have a little more um, support creating some of these techniques that I really, really love. So that's out and it's big and I'm excited <laughs> about it. All right. Well, tell us where we can find you on the internet. Mm -hmm. You can find me at brandycheyenneharper.com. That is my website. You can also find me on Instagram um, at brandycheyenneharper. And if you, ever want, if you ever want to take online classes with me, I highly recommend um, trying out my Skillshare classes. They're really comprehensive and I am really proud of them. They did a great job helping me to kind of like flush out the idea in the, in the class syllabus. 
And of course, my book, Knitting for Radical Self-Care, is available everywhere books are sold. So you can request it from your local library if you want to get it for free and like just rent it for a short time, or you can get it at any major book retailer that you visit or your local yarn shop. Awesome. And how about YouTube? Where can we find you on YouTube? Oh, yes. I, I'm like shy about my YouTube because it's new. Um, it's Brandy Cheyenne Harper on YouTube. And yeah, I have technique videos on there. They're very like ASMR style. So if you, if you really like, you know, and they're all, they're all techniques to support my book. So, um, you know, they're really simple. They're like three to five minutes long and they're relaxing music and I'm doing mostly technique, but you can look forward to some like vlog art kind of how to videos That'll be great. Um, in the future. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you so much for that chat. I feel like, I don't know. I just like learned so much and I can't wait to come to New York to give you a squeeze the next time I'm in town. Thank you so much, Brandy. Thank you. All right. Let me bring forward Anna. We have Anna Hoosman here and on screen with her is her test knitter, Anka. So hi, Anka. <laughs> hi. Um, but we're going to chit chat a little bit with Anna. Um, I have to say I was super excited when you submitted for the book. I've been following you for a while on Instagram. I don't know how I found you. I think you popped up on my explore page and I just started following you. And honestly, I have to say between you and Florence Sperling, who is also in the book, you guys got me thinking about intarsia again in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, I took a domestica class from you once, and I think you were talking about how you keep your intarsia very um, organic, mm -hmm. you know, an yeah. organic style. So I will, I'll ask you a little bit about this. I'm like going off here. I'm going to like wax. <laughs> <Okay. here. laughs> let's back up a little bit and let's like get to know Anna Hoosman, who is a German-based designer. She's the designer of the Molig hat here, this beautiful hat that she's designed that is reversible. So we can turn it inside out. It features intarsia in the round. And it's honestly, I mean, one of my favorite hats that I've ever seen in my life. Like when you submitted for this one, I was like, oh my gosh. And so <laughs> please tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us your knitting origin story and um, yeah, introduce us, introduce yourself to us. Yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm Anna. I'm a textile and knitwear designer based in Hamburg. And I studied textile design here in Hamburg as well. And pretty early in my studies, I decided to focus on knitwear, both on uh, machine knitting and hand knitting. Um, although I did a lot of uh, weaving and dyeing and screen printing and wood printing, when I studied, um, it was knitting that I wanted to focus on. And I mean, um, um, it, my mom taught me to knit. Uh, when I was very little, like uh, even before school. So it has always been there. <laughs> but uh, there was a long time when I haven't knitted that much. I think at about 18, I rediscovered it and then I never stopped knitting. <laughs> so uh, it has, is, uh, I made it even before I studied. But um, when studying, it just came back and I really wanted to focus on it and dive deep into it. <laughs> Yeah. That's wonderful. So how, so how long would you say that you consider yourself a, de a knitwear designer? Mm, well, I've been uh, designing knitwear since studying because I was always um, uh, designing my own motives and my own patterns and transferring uh, illustrations into knitted textiles. And um, about four years ago, I, I started um, producing and selling ready to wear knitwear accessories and um, it was only like two years ago when I started uh, designing hand knitting patterns and I think it's it's a bit like you said Brandy um, it's it's uh, some kind of um, how do you say that um, it's a path and I think it's okay. um, lifting a bit uh, towards more the, the craft part of my business so I'm focusing more and more on um, making knitwear designs like um, knitting patterns because what I really like about it is that you can come up with something really unique and adventurous regardless um, of the factors like time or even like budget 
Well, not, my, not that I'm talking my cat want to come. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's going to be like, look at the cat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, because if you if you design a, um, a ready-to-wear a knitwear collection, budget and time, especially time, uh, is really the key point, And it has a, like, a lot to do with the pattern that you come up with. Because um, in charge is really time consuming. And uh, so I thought I'm, I more and more reduced the entire part on the hat, for example. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Special guest. <laughs> so what I really like about doing patterns, um, machine knitting or hand knitting patterns, that, that you can get really adventurous and you don't have to think about time or you can create really something really unique. So I think I'll focus more and more on that part uh, of, of my business. So um, there will be more patterns and less uh, ready to wear production pieces. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, Cause I love, I love knitting your patterns and I love looking at your, your hand knit patterns coming out. So I would, I would love to see Good more for us. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting. <You? laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about Molig. So Molig is this, this model here from the book. Um, we absolutely had so much fun shooting this. It was a cold day in Helsinki and the model was so excited. We had to wait till the end to do the shoot because we didn't want to mess up her hair. So yeah. we did all the hats at the end and they were just like, give me the hats, give me the hats because it was really cold. Um, tell us about the inspiration for Molig. How did this shape come about for Molig? Mm, well, the the first... Um was more like an inspiration because when I was about to submit something, I was, I think it was um, about New Year um, and I was on holiday at the countryside and um, we took a walk early in the morning and um, it was really freezing cold and uh, everything was uh, covered with a thin layer of frost and it was a really magical scene and also and um, there was a special muted color palette that creates one covered in frost. So this was my first inspiration, the color theme. And then when we worked, uh, like um, the sun was shining as well. It was a really winter morning. Um, and the warmer it got, um, this uh, layer of frost melted. And then the scenery got um, brighter and livelier. Um, so I, I wanted to create um, something that you wanted to wear in such a scenery, but also that was inspired by the feel and the look of such a scenery. So this was the, the first uh, inspiration for that design. And then I started to um, uh, make a few collage shapes because when I design, I always start with a series of collage shaping because it, um, it's a really good um, technique to, to uh, bra brainstorm and to sketch. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I came up with some of these um, shapes and then I uh, digitalized them, all those shapes, and mm -hmm. played around uh, with positioning. And my uh, first idea was um, a bit different. So it was a long journey <laughs> from, from my first idea to like, like always to the end of um, the hat. Um, so um, I played around with the shapes and initially I, I made a like a plain head, a plain molek, mm -hmm. because um, the construction is double layered. And yes. I thought I, I really wanted to um, try out where to position those shapes and um, needed, uh, I, I cut them out and then I do it quite often, pin them onto the head to try out, okay, where do I want them to sit? Where do I want which part? And then uh, I, I also sewed on this kind of thing <laughs> because it, it didn't work with paper because it, it like it's over mm -hmm. the brim and then yes. folded. Yes. And so I had all my shapes pinned on that head. Then I unfolded it to see how the pattern will work because this is something I couldn't imagine in my head. I needed to make it with with the hands, like a test test knit. Yeah, oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, 
the, it had all the shapes. I mean, you just blew my mind. I just was, I'm like, I know. Completely. Knitting completely. And now I'm going to go and like cut some shapes out and like pin yeah. them on there and like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is how I always do it. And uh, this is the way I can like choose the sizes because if you if you knit it in um in intarsia, it takes so long. And then I knit it and I see, oh no, I want it to be a like, bit bigger or I want it to, to sit more like on the brim. Mm. So good to wow. test it before with a plain head. <laughs> wow, what a great idea. What a great, great idea. So what does molig mean? Um, molig is a German adjective. It means something like cozy and warm and soft. Um, but it can also mean like wooly because it, I mean, it's it's a double layered um, head in worsted weight yarn, which is quite thick and it's it creates quite a warm accessory. Yes. So you feel all wrapped up warmly when you wear wallick, wallick. <laughs> oh. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I have to say all the, like the, the cold states that I visited on tour, everybody was so excited about this because they're like, this is a hat that I need for my winters here. And so they love it. Yeah. This is perfect. I'm going to, I'm going to make one so I can wear it this winter when I ride my bicycle. Yeah. The perfect kind of hat to have when you're riding your bike in the winter. Yeah. Really warm. <laughs> So I mentioned earlier that you give classes on domestica. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Uh, yes, I've got a one uh, class on domestica, which is all about intarsia, but also about um, developing your own motive and uh, creating uh, with intarsia. So um, there's a project that you can knit a uh, top and you can decide if you either want to knit the pattern that I designed, the motive that I designed, or you can use an empty chart and fill it with your own motive. And in the course, um, I also introduce myself and I share a bit about my inspiration, but I also get, give uh, advices or I, sh I show a bit like how I create my designs with collages. And um, I give tips like um, how I work with my mood board or how I decide on colors with yarn wrappings so that you can come up with your own idea. <laughs> very cool. It's a very cool class and I highly recommend it. Um, what's so great is I can tell immediately the kind of classes that you offer and the kind of classes that Brandy offers are, are mm. different. You guys are talking about similar techniques using intarsia, intarsia in the round. Um, I'm going to bring Brandy back up at the end because I would love to ask both of you to give some advice for intarsia. I feel like people are scared of this technique or they yeah. get, yeah, they need to are like, oh my God, I can't do it. And it's so easy. I think that it's easier than knitting color work sweaters, you yes. know? Yes. So at the end, when we finish everything, I'm going to bring you guys up and let you have a moment to give some advice on Intarja. Um, I do want to ask if you could have knit any design from the book, Anna, which one would it be? Yes, it would be the vest. I don't know how it's pronounced, but you, you, yeah, you, yeah. from Val by Valerie Ing, Valerie, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, because I really love the shape of it, and uh, uh, of course the herringbone stitch, because I've never done it in uh, color work, combined yeah. with color work, yeah, <laughs> and I, I assume, <laughs> like, I, I never touched it, but I assume it's, it creates quite a firm fabric, or, or a, quite a thick fabric, Mm -hmm. And I really like firm knitting <laughs> and I really like to wear it. Firm vest and it's perfect for interseason. Honestly, I want to have one and wear it on my bicycle when I'm bicycling in the wintertime. Yeah. It's a great like sh inner shell to add a layer without having extra sleeves. Yeah. I'm all about the vest now, guys. This is like all the best. <laughs> yeah. And no sleeves ever. No sleeves. No sleeves. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> yeah. This is what I really want to make. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we would love to see that. Um, are you working on any special projects right now or anything that you can sneak peek us? Uh, well, I'm working on quite a big project, which is secret, so I can't share it. But I can say it's all about motives. It's all about colors. And um, I'm exploring um, all the variations of Intarja. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay. that's, that's got Amy tingling how's <laughs> you all over <laughs> well that's exciting well thank you also before we end with you because we're going to pass over to Anka and Julia is going to have a little conversation with your test knitter tell yeah. us where we can find you on the internet 
um, you can find me via Instagram um, at Anna uh, underscore who's a man. <laughs> and I've got also got a website. It's www.plish.de. Um, it's it basically works like a link tree, um, which leads you to all the other pages like my parents on Ravelry or my YouTube channel. Um, you can all find it there. Okay, great. Also, okay. I just have to say, working with you on the collaboration, this I discovered this brand chaos. Yeah, Denmark, which I was so excited to discover. It is a, a commercially dyed yarn that has an incredible color range and, and beautiful bases. And so I was super, super excited when you submitted to design mixing. This is Le Bien Aimé, the main color, but with chaos, because that was a new discovery for me. And I absolutely love this yarn so much. Yeah. So thank you for that. You're welcome. All right. I'm, I'm I'm going to leave Julia to chat a little bit with Anka. <laughs> Hi, Anka. Hi. It's really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> and it's so much fun that you and Anna actually live close enough that you decided, yeah. hey, let's do this together. <laughs> actually, Amy and I are in the same building, but <laughs> each ah, one of us. <laughs> <different rooms. laughs> So it's really nice to meet you. And can you please introduce yourself and tell us who taught you how to knit? Yes. Hi, I'm Anke. <laughs> I'm 30, 37 years old and I'm living in, in Hamburg since uh, 2019. Um, and I came here uh, after studying landscape architecture. And while studying, I don't have so much time uh, to knit. Um, and I did it normally or I learned it as a child and I um, had many episodes of knitting and then while studying there was not the time for that and when I get a job here in Hamburg um, I had money <laughs> and I had time after work um, to start knitting again and the pandemic was like um, a shot to do it again and mm. starting knitting and yeah so I started a new knitting adventure for me and um, saw how many different designs and how many new uh, yarn yarn stores or yarn brands uh, came up into 10 years. <laughs> it was, uh, very motivating and inspiring and um, yes. So that's my story of knitting. <laughs> yeah, I think for for everyone, it discovering you know the world of knitting not just learning to knit but discovering the world of knitting is like falling into a rabbit hole because there's so so much out there so much to discover so many yarns so many designers yes um and i think also also the pandemic had that effect on so many people suddenly everyone had time to be at home and do nothing but knit. and also on instagram I yes. had a feeling that since 2019, so many uh, Instagram accounts of knitting came up. Um, yeah, it was nice. <laughs> Very <laughs> inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> and so how did you become a test knitter? Uh, did you already know Anna or did you guys meet through mm -hmm. test knitting? I wanted to connect to other knitters here in Hamburg. And so I had a look uh, what I if I can so join some knitting clubs or something else. Uh, and I saw that Anna is giving um, hand dyeing workshops for yarn. And then I said, okay, I will try it. And I visited the course and yes. So then I met Anna and after this uh, course, we, we stayed in contact uh, together and she asked me if I want to test knit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I became a test knitter. <laughs> Super. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and do you have your Molig with you? Yes, of course. Yay! <laughs> oh, um, I love it. I saw it online. Yes. And the it. colors are very similar to uh, Anna's original. Or to yeah. One. Um, but I like the, the color combination. Yes. I, I think Anna has a very good feeling for, for colors and structures and textures and mm. Uh, I wanted to test it <laughs> and to learn um, how she designs it. Yeah. That's lovely. Could, could you tell us which yarn you used? Um, oh, I used um, Double Sunday by Sandnitz yarn. Okay. 
and the brush alpaca from chaos yarn this mm. is uh, i think this this one this beautiful uh yes color yeah. charming uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the violet tone is from knitting for olive the soft silk mohair mm. yes yeah very <laughs> cute lovely um and could you tell us, have you been knitting a lot lately? And what have you been knitting? Can you please show up, show us a couple of your recent projects? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, the last small one was a little Sophie scarf. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I don't even know how many of those I've knit. Yes. <laughs> so many. It's a, it's a very simple um, design or accessoire for a short knitting time. Yes. <laughs> And I use my hand dyed yarn too. And a very special one is oh, this slip over. It's it should become the same slip over I'm wearing right now. Uh, but uh, this uh, design is applicated. Yes, yeah. it's this one is uh, applicated by me on this. Uh, are you oh. weaving? Are you weaving on the top, or are you like are you no. doing embroidery? What's that? It's a slip stitch variation. Slip stitch. Oh. Okay. And um, I think this is very cool because you can wear it on both sides. Yeah. So on the back yes. side, it's the, the stripes. Mm. Very cute. And if you turn it, you have the slip stitch. I love reversible things. It's like two outfits in one, you know. That's so yeah. great. <laughs> what pattern is this? Um, I saw the pattern on a on a fabric in a in a shop and I was like oh this one looks so good I want to knit it <laughs> um and Anna helped me to uh, rewrite the pattern so that I can applicate it on this one <laughs> amazing <laughs> yes cool. so it's a freestyle one yes <laughs> I've never done that. That's super no, great. You, <laughs> you gotta try it. You just <laughs> yes yeah yeah, it's fun. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Anke. It was lovely to meet you. And thank you me. have a wonderful morning. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to bring up Brandy here. And so we've got everyone up on screen. I wanted to talk about Intarja just really quick because I've got two Intarja. I've got two designers here who use the Intarja technique. And while I've been out on tour, I've been trying to, you know, gently nudge people towards Intarja. I just released my little bandana pattern and I have this one's the kind of crazy one that's like got intarja all over, but I had done one with very simple motifs to be like introductory intarja. Can you give us some advice? So if you're saying like, I think that the, the most important advice is to get people interested in so they're not scared about it. So this is for beginners. For starting okay. intarja. So Brandy, why don't you start? And <laughs> intarja for sure. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I love that. So I ha I love Intarja because I I like working with color. I like combining color um, in really beautiful ways. Like even I was just working on this little bear. <laughs> this is not it's crochet, so it's not Intarja, but it has like these little pins. But uh -huh. I'm using the yarn from my "Say Hello to My Colors" sweater that I'm doing from Jesse Name. It's beautiful, but it's a lot of color work. I think the best advice I kind of would give myself and I don't, I break my rule of time and I regret it, is to keep your yarn detangled as you're working. So I know a lot of us, you just want to knit, you don't want to have to worry about it. But I think when you're working with different colors, even if you're working with one or two, two or three colors, and it's not that much, it's not, this is fair isle actually, what I just showed you, but in Tarja, it's a little, it's a little different because you're using blocks of color. And so it's not as it's not as, you know, it's less tangling than Fair Isle, but I recommend like every, at, at any point you feel your yarn is, you know, wrapping around it, you know, around itself, use it as a way of like, you know, I'm going to neaten my yarn today, you know, I'm going to neaten my yarn right now, just set aside five minutes yeah. and just, you know, just unweave it. And I have used it as like a, I, I know, I think a lot of us like, as if you don't like tangled yarn, you get frustrated, like, ah! You know, yeah. on the side, right? <laughs> I love, I started to um, use untangling as a way of like being mindful. So I'll like have tea or maybe even have a podcast or like a show I've watched a million times on. And I would use that time to kind of just be in the present moment and 
use it as an opportunity to, to, to be in the present moment and untangle my yarn. So if you use untangling as a way of like meditating, I think it might help you um, mm -hmm. and it will definitely improve your experience with color work in general, but definitely in Tarja. I love that. It's so good and powerful. Makes me want to go home and untangle my tape. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about you, Anna? What kind of advice would you offer to a beginner who's starting out in Tarja? Mm, I might recommend uh, wrapping the yarn onto some kind of a cardboard or something that you've got like tiny balls and they're all, I mean, they, they don't get that tangled up if you've got them wrapped up on a cardboard. And important is that it doesn't um, unroll because mm. the more it unrolls, the more it tangles up. So you can snip into the cardboard and uh, secure the end in it. And then you've got them hanging more in the line, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, and I think what um, scares some people are color charts, which I completely don't understand because it's the easiest thing to read and it even tracks your <laughs> rows. It's like a row tracker. Oh. But uh, people get like um, uncomfortable reading it if they've never done it before. So maybe start with an introduction for colored charts, what how to reach it or what how to do it. And some sometimes like beginners even don't know that they need to um, like cover the rows upwards mm -hmm. <laughs> from what they are, are read they are reading because they cover it below and it just doesn't help at all if you can't see which row you made before. Yes. So, is um how to read maybe how to read charts yes is a good advice that is really good advice because i think that's another thing that kind of scares people away is there's charts yeah. i tell you it's a map it's telling you where to go you know yeah, it's gonna it's brilliant. Lead, you know so yeah oh thank yeah. you that's wonderful advice thank you so much um so we have we're coming to the end of our episode and i have two fun questions that i would like to ask i'll start with brandy and then we'll go to anna and then anka um what is your knitting superpower oh man you know i thought about this and it is beginning again um i think for me being able to rip things out without i will not hesitate yes. and when i do I will knit three or four inches and I'll just be like, I just, knitting for me is a, one of the opportunities, it's like the very rare opportunity to either fix my mistakes or undo them. And it's really the only time, you know, in my life I'm able to. And, yeah. um, and I love the fact that I can just begin again. It's definitely something that I think kind of translates in all aspects of my life actually um to start a new a new craft a new hobby a new part of my job that I I need to do to get better at what I'm doing and also in my my knitting work it's just like being like nope it's not gonna work let's do it again beautiful <laughs> beautiful I love that so inspirational um what about you Anna what's your knitting superpower mm, I'd say maybe choosing color and material combinations because I <laughs> I think secretly that's my most loved part about designing, <laughs> even though mostly the the motives um, like are in mostly like present, but the colors are my favorite part. Choosing colors, combining materials, thinking about color combinations for hours. <laughs> I just love that. It's true. Your Instagram is extremely inspiring when you like look at it from a distance and you see all the colors that you put together. Yeah. It's just so much fun. I love that. Yeah. I could you know, wind yarn, yarn windings for hours. <laughs> 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 and do it again and again. <laughs> okay, Anka, what's your knitting superpower? Yes, um, I'm not scared uh, about every pattern. I, When I see a pattern I like or a design um, I like and I, I want it, I'm not thinking about, oh, I don't have the right skills for it. It's like, I see it and I know that I can do it. Like oh, all the that. skills I'm learning in the process. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's true. Anka had never knitted in Taja before she made Molly and she even started with yes. in Taja and round. Oh, oh I love that. And I had some, I had some questions to Anna and, um, yeah. Yeah. And then she told me how to learn. It yes. just worked. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right, Brandy, if you were a stitch or a knitting technique, which one would you be? I would be, I love this because I thought about it. I would be the crochet chain provisional cast on. <laughs> because 
like I said, beginning again, like one thing that stops me from beginning sometimes is not knowing where I'm going. You know, like that is really disorienting, like being like, what if I change my mind and I don't want to do it anymore, you know, and to crochet chain, crochet chain, castle allows you to begin and work your work, you know, do whatever you want to do. And there's so much flexibility. I can change my trim. I can decide to like go in a completely different direction. <laughs> I can um, I can keep it. I can say, wow, I love this technique and I can keep it because it's beautiful and decorative on its own. And, and it's kind of involves knitting and crochet. And I feel like that's kind of like with my work, I like to incorporate knitting and crochet in my work and different things to kind of bring my ideas to life. And so knitting for crochet chain for business cast on does that because it uses a couple of different tools. And uh, yeah, that's the technique I'd be. I love that so much. I do <laughs> love doing a provisional cast on with a crochet chain. Yes. It's so much fun. And, and you know, when you have to unzip it, because if you need the live stitches for something else, it's so yes. satisfying. To it do really it. is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Anna, what would you be, what would, if you were a stitch or a knitting technique, which one would you be? Mm, I'd like to be a knit and pearl pattern, I think, because oh. when you look far from a distance, it's like plain and it's just one color. But if you come closer, it becomes more complex and textured. And um, I love that there are endless possibilities that can, <laughs> you can create with knit and pearl. <laughs> so true. So yeah. true. I love that answer. Okay, Anka, what about you? Yes, so uh, I would like to be a uh, lace stitch, so yarn over and decrease or increase because I, I love the result and it takes so much focus on the pattern, but in the end it's it looks so lovely and feminine or romantic that I love it very much, yes. <laughs> I love your point of view, that's so beautiful. Well, thank you, you guys. This was such a fun little session that we had talking about neons and neutrals, but we have come to an end. So I want to thank everyone for joining us here on Amy's Knit Lab. Um, mm -hmm. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. And we hope to continue to provide content like this through the year. This is my series of interviews with designers from my book, Neons and Neutrals, which is now available. It is available in hard copy and digital. So... I think that's it. We're this is so weird, Julie, because usually we do these on Fridays, and usually I say like, "Have a great weekend, everyone." Yes, <laughs> have a good week. say, like, "Have a great Sunday. week." <laughs> it's Monday, so everybody have a great uh, weekend. We'll see you soon. Thank Bye. You so much. Bye. 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 Bye.